Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Today's episode is going out to Matter of Act, who says, God, I love the rundown. It's as good as a freshly brewed cup of coffee. We will take that endorsement, and we will give you this rundown. Marvel has unveiled their new Thor movie and totally spoiled the best part. Take a look at the first trailer for Thor Ragnarok, the third film headlined by the hammer-wielding Asgardian. The story will see the kingdom of Asgard destroyed by the villainous Hela, played by Cate Blanchett, leading to Thor being imprisoned on the alien world of Sakaar by the ageless Grand Master, played by Jeff Goldblum. Here's the big spoiler. While Thor is there, he's forced into gladiator-style combat with none other than the Incredible Hulk, which means that a big chunk of the film will basically be an adaptation of the popular Planet Hulk comic series. Fans have been asking for a Planet Hulk movie for years, and word that Marvel was going to include the storyline in this film has been trickling out for at least a year. But now that it's in the trailer, it will be hard for fans to go into this film unspoiled. There's another big takeaway from the Thor trailer. Marvel is clearly going for a Guardians of the Galaxy vibe. This makes a lot of sense when you consider how successful that film was, especially compared to the relatively lukewarm reception of the first two Thor movies. Although everyone loves Chris Hemsworth as Thor, his films haven't been as successful as other Marvel franchises, so maybe the third time is the charm. Thor Ragnarok will bring the hammer down in theaters on November 3rd. In the meantime, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 hits Earth on May 5th, so hopefully audiences won't be too spaced out. This is a little bittersweet, but Star Wars Episode IX won't be missing one of the saga's most beloved characters. Todd Fisher, the brother of late actress Carrie Fisher, has revealed that footage of his sister as Princess Leia will appear in the final film in the new Star Wars trilogy. Carrie Fisher tragically and unexpectedly passed away in December at the age of 60, shortly after finishing her work on the next film, Episode VIII, The Last Jedi, leaving in doubt what would become of her beloved character in the final movie. Speaking with the New York Daily News, Todd Fisher says that he and Carrie Fisher's daughter, Billy Lord, have given Disney permission to use recent footage of her to create Leia's scenes for Episode IX. It's unclear how big of a part she'll have in the movie, and whatever scenes she does have will likely need to be written around the available footage. The same story in the New York Daily News also claims that the studio isn't planning to use CGI to create her scenes, unlike the younger version of Leia that appeared in Rogue One. Star Wars fans are still saddened over the death of Carrie Fisher, so knowing that her character will live on comes as some comfort. May the Force be with you. Episode 9 won't arrive in theaters until 2019, with Episode 8, The Last Jedi, landing this year. The first footage from the film will likely be shown off later this week at the annual Star Wars Celebration event, which kicks off Thursday and runs all weekend. Expect new details about other upcoming Star Wars projects like the Han Solo spin-off movie and the next season of Rebels as well. Since this is the 40th anniversary of the original Star Wars movie, we've got our fingers crossed that Disney will finally announce the long-rumored restoration of the original versions of the first three films. The only versions that are officially available in any decent quality are the altered cuts with extra scenes and CGI enhancements, so purists have been holding out hope for a proper restoration of the real versions of the movies. Yes, I bet you have. We'll let you know what Disney announces. As you wish. <clears throat> the sophisticated and unexplored subculture of backyard wrestling is finally getting the spotlight it deserves. The new Canadian comedy Heel Kick is a mockumentary about two backyard wrestlers who decide to go pro. Unfortunately for them, they suck. The movie itself thankfully doesn't suck and offers plenty of tongue-in-cheek humor that also pays tribute to the very real world of backyard wrestling. Danny Mac, the film's writer, co-director, and lead actor, is himself a big fan of backyard wrestling. He and producer-slash-co-star Cooper Bebeau have been working on the film for years and are finally able to start showing it to audiences. We caught up with them over the weekend at their screening in Vancouver. The reason why we kept going uh, year after year when there was problems in the editing room, when I was going to training at the Professional Wrestling Academy, getting myself heard every day, we waited for this exact moment, specifically for a screening here in Vancouver, and have vindicated every piece of hard work we've ever put into this. It's a long journey, three years it took us. That's a lot of time in the editing room. Uh, but like you said, this is why we do it. And the, the cool thing is every screening has been different. The energy has been different every time. It's cool to see what jokes people like the, in certain shows and other times other jokes that weigh more laughs and other things. So everything is, it's always new to us every time. Heel Kick also has the support of Kind of Funny's Greg Miller, who's publicly backing the film and has a producer credit. I want to be a part of Heel Kick for the simple reason that it's got two great Canadian boys behind it. You guys are so polite, so nice. So when I met Danny, when I met Cooper the first time, uh, 
they made an impression on me. They were great dudes, right? They were in this for the right reasons. So then, when I saw the film and saw that it was awesome, it was great, it was a no-brainer that I wanted to contribute however I could. More screenings of Heel Kick will take place in theaters across North America throughout the year, and they're hoping to get it into a wider release. We'll let you know when new screenings are announced. Oh, I forgot protein powder. I guess it doesn't matter. Speaking of backyard wrestling, Naruto fans are going to have a lot to play this year. Bandai Namco has announced a slew of Naruto games. First up, the publisher has unveiled the all-new Naruto to Baruto Shinobi Striker. Like its predecessors, it's a fighting game that includes open-world exploration, with players traversing a vast ninja world filled with foes to fight. The combat is based around four versus four matches with online support, so up to eight different people can go head-to-head. -head. That arrives later this year on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Also arriving this year is the remastered Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Legacy Collection, featuring all four games in the Ultimate Ninja Storm series. The first three games were originally released on last-gen systems, so they're being enhanced for current gen. The fourth game in the set, Ultimate Ninja Storm 4, is already available on current gen, so to make fans want it again, Namco Bandai is including its recent expansion, Road to Boruto, which has never been released in the West before. Namco Bandai says that it will make the perfect gift for a Naruto fan, so it will probably be released closer to the holiday shop season. The invisible hand of the marketplace is coming to the vast world of Minecraft. Microsoft and their subsidiary Mojang have announced the Minecraft Marketplace, a new in-game store that will allow users to buy skins, texture packs, maps, and other virtual items made by Microsoft and third-party developers without leaving the game. There's long been an official Minecraft store, but it only offers first-party items made by Mojang. So the new Marketplace will offer both first-party and third-party items together in one place for the first time. The developers hope this will make it much more convenient for Minecraft fans to buy new stuff, which will probably lead to a lot more sales. It will start with just content from Microsoft and official third-party partners, with the plan to eventually make it possible for anyone to sell items from the store, with Microsoft taking a commission, of course. The Minecraft Marketplace will launch later this spring for the Windows 10 and Pocket versions of the game. Here's the best part, user-created mods will still be free, so Microsoft isn't going to start making you pay for those. I'd be willing to spend a night in a haunted house, but only if it had decent Wi-Fi. Variety reports that Netflix is in the early stages of developing a series based on the 1959 horror novel The Haunting of Hill House. It tells the story of four people trapped inside a haunted mansion, and the book has already been turned into a movie twice. The Netflix series is being developed by filmmaker Mike Flanagan, who helmed the well-received 2013 ghost movie Oculus. Netflix has had mixed success with the horror genre. Last year's Stranger Things was easily one of their most popular original shows, while the gory Hemlock Grove wasn't as well-received and was cancelled after three seasons. No release window yet for the new Haunting of Hill House. Last year, Netflix announced their intentions to drastically increase their output of original shows, so don't expect them to slow down anytime soon. That's it for our rundown today, all of you mighty Asgardians. Don't forget, we've got a brand new episode headed your way tomorrow, and we've got lots of other videos for you to check out. If you like our stuff, hit subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow.